meeting is called to order. Roll call for the City Council meeting of Wednesday, March 15th, 2017 at 7.30 p.m. Mr. Kwiatkowski, Mrs. Arrington, Mr. Brennan, Mr. Jones, Mr. Mursky, Mr. Winarski, Mr. Witherspoon. Please arise for a moment of silent meditation and pledge of allegiance. Uh, would that we would remember all those <clears throat> excuse me, in our community that are less fortunate than we are, um, both locally as well as globally. Also remember those that have lost loved ones in our community since we were last in these chambers. And finally, we ask our God and our Creator to give us the wisdom and the proper information to make the best decisions for the citizens of the city of Erie. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Approval of minutes for the City Council meeting of Wednesday, March 1st, 2017, and bills for payment on March 10th, 17th, and 24th, 2017. Mrs. Arrington. Mr. Brennan, Mr. Jones, Mr. Mursky, Mr. Winarski, Mr. Witherspoon, Mr. Kotowski. Okay, that moves us to repository sales? Yeah. Do we have any citizens here uh, in response to repository sales? Uh, please approach your mic one at a time. So please state your name and address. Jesse Johnson, 1587 Coventry, Cleveland Heights, Ohio. Ruth Johnson, 3028 South Moreland, Cleveland Heights, I mean Cleveland, Ohio. And you're requesting which property? 844 E7. Okay. Uh, please tell us what you have in, in, intended for it. Uh, we're going to bring it up to code, renovate it, and live in it, moving back to Erie. Thank you. Are there any questions from any council members? Mr. President. Yes, sir, Ms. Mursky. Um, First off, I want to thank you for uh, moving back to Erie. We appreciate that. Uh, 844 East 7th, uh, is it a single-family home, a duplex? Single family. Single family. Okay. And um, is there, in that neighborhood, is there an alley in the back? Like some of those neighborhoods down No, there. there's no alley. No there. alley. Any garage or anything? Or is just no garage. Just okay. the backyard. All right. Thank you. And um, do you have the financial means to, to, to repair it or the, yes. the skills? And Yep. We okay. Do. No other questions. Any other questions? Were you planning on a living there or just? Both of us Both are going to okay. there. Okay. Yeah, I saw it and I was reading your prospectus online. Uh, so I'm glad to, you know, we, we love investment like this. Mm -hmm. uh, We'd love to be back near our family. <laughs> that's always good. Yep. Yes. And yeah, we lose too many of our people and that's not good. But uh, we won't be voting on this today, but rather next meeting. Okay. Okay. So thank you for your uh, pursuit of taking care of that house. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thanks for coming. Hello. Hi. Please state your name and address. My name is Taquana Gray. I live on 2005 McCain Ave, Erie, PA. And the property you're interested in? The property I'm interest, interested in is 332, hold on, sorry, 332 East 11th. And I'm looking for making it into a garden and extended property. We have bought the house behind it, 335 10th Street, and we'd like to extend it for the children and have some garden space. So that's pretty much it. Okay. Any questions from any council members? I have a question, and this is not, not for you, uh, Miss, but for us, if, <clears throat> if it goes from one block uh, back to back, is there a, is there a way of consolidating those uh, um, parcels, I guess? Because it would sound you're talking, you're on the 300 block of East 10th. Yes. And then the 300, the other, the property you're looking for would be like an additional backyard. Yes. For you, so you would have that little sliver from 11th to 10th. Yes. Would be your property, which is a beautiful thing. I'm just, for us, um, process-wise, is that an issue 
Dave, you might know. Yeah, you can you can go to the uh, your county courthouse and join the properties together if you would like. Okay. Well, I'm sure the solicitor would. Uh, yeah, I was just again if with if, if it's if they're next to each other, I can see how that is kind of an easier process. But I didn't know if it was an issue because it's connecting two different streets. I don't. I didn't know. So, yeah, okay. All right. It might be a way for you to do kind of pull your properties together once you you know get this process happening to um, do that somebody that lives right behind us they have a little slit that goes behind their garage we're going to talk to them seeing if it's okay for us to use that little slit to get to 11th street okay okay great thank you okay, thank you thank you and thank you very much and uh, as i said earlier we will be voting this uh, on our next meeting and uh, thank you that that fits in greatly with uh, what we're trying to do in the city which is clean up these empty lots so thank you for your enthusiasm, your investment. Get off. I just don't know what happened. No, we got one. How you doing, everybody? Doing this evening. I'm uh, Tommy Clanton. I reside at 1814 Harlan Street. Um, I'm looking to get the property located at 224 East 24th Street. It's a uh, it's a lot empty lot. I'm looking to enclose it and make it a uh, off street parking for the residents 226 that I own. Are there any questions from any council members? Okay, that lot, uh, I assume it's not currently paved. No, nah, not at all. Okay, is that in the making and your plans? Yeah, yeah, along with some trees, maybe some trees getting chopped down also. Okay, thank you. Is the parking going to be for just you or? Uh... Yeah, just, just. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes. How many cars do you think you'll be? Uh, maybe two, three at the most. Okay. Thank you. Mr. President. Yes, Mr. Mursky. Um, do you plan on keeping any of the, the property green space, or is it uh, just going to pave the, the entire lot? Um, as of now, maybe just paved a lot, but uh, okay. I wouldn't mind having a garden or whatever the case may be, some of that nature, if I can... Um, Okay. And um, is there anything, the only thing I worry about is, uh, um, depending on the slope of the land, the drainage is going to go. Um, so if you just, you know, make accommodations for that, you might have to talk to, uh, was that zoning or who would? Engineering. The engineering department, right, would, would be who you would talk to about. You might have to put in a, like, 10-gallon drum or something to put to capture the water or, Somewhere, if it runs off into the neighbor's property, I don't want you to get in trouble. That's all. Mm -hmm. You know, if it floods their basement or something. Yeah. Thank you. Mr. President, another, <clears throat> and this, again, this is going to be, Mr. Clanton, for your your property, and so residents there, will that'll be their space. Um, just a little bit of advice, for lack of a better term. You, um, I don't know if you want to use the term parking lot. So that's a different technical connotation. Uh, so this would just be the driveway, multiple car driveway for your residents. Uh, because when people hear parking lot, then they start thinking, well, parking lot for what? And, yeah. and there might be a different zoning issues. So it would, it would just be you would utilize it as the parking space or the driveway for your property. And, and so, you know, just to kind of keep any other definition. There's legal and technical definitions that could cause... Um, a challenge there, so. Absolutely. But we know what your intention is, and we we appreciate you wanting to uh, to beautify the space and, and grow your own property as well. Any, any, any other other questions? questions? Okay. Any other questions? Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, we will be uh, voting on this next meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Gabe. Good young man. Uh, any other citizens for repositories? Any other citizens for repositories? Any other citizens for repositories? Hearing none, we'll now move on to citizens to be heard. Mr. President, before we do that, I have a question. Um, yes, Mr. So a citizen called me earlier <clears throat> this week, and this may be for a legal question. So if we, you know, we'll respect your opinion, Mr. Carley, whatever it is, right? Uh, if we, <laughs> yes, if there is a, so the repository sale process, you person, it's on the list, $250 minimum bid, 
um, and they go in and they, someone puts in a bid for that. If there's another person or another group interested in that same property, is it a legit? Is the language of bid the right language? Because can someone put a higher bid in and trump the 250, or does it have to go through the process at that first bidder's request, and then it's a council? Or then we decide yes or no, and then because that was the question for me because there was a property that may be coming up soon that an individual or a group went to put a bid in on in the repository process, but someone had already put in on it. And they wanted to know that answer, and I don't know it. Okay, let me ask you a question. Yes, sir. Technically, right. Mm -hmm. Your vote here is either up or down, and the law specifically says uh, the approval for their sale can't be unreasonably withheld. Okay. In my opinion, in the law, that means not a whole heck of a lot you can say say to influence it. Sure. Your decision here isn't to grant these people a deed or anything. Mm -hmm. It goes over from the county. So okay. if they have a procedure where there's uh, one person wants to give more, I suspect, but I don't know with absolute certainty, that they could say knock the 250 out and accept 500. But right. I, I don't Okay. Great. So, so these individuals, it would be best for them to go over to the county and ask that question on their process. That's who, that's who grants the deed. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jones. <laughs> I'm moving on to citizens to be heard. Rose, do we have anybody wrote in no the one, uh, No one signed up. Okay, we're going to open it up to the general public. Please state your name and address, please. My name is Crystal Lepak. I am the Youth Coordinator for Youth Leadership Institute of Erie, and I am here today to talk to you about our Global Youth Service Day. It is coming up on April 22nd, and um, we will be at that time meeting at East High School, and they will, um, the kids will go ahead at that time and register and get assigned their projects, and then on that day go out and do some of their projects. Um, I'm going to have Sam pass you out uh, some letters. Go ahead, and you can come back here. And what we, this is going to tell you some detailed information about what it is that we are doing. Here, Sam. Thank you. Thank you. One of the things that we are doing this year differently is we are collaborating with Serve Erie. Um, Serve Erie, as you are aware, have um, made a four-year pact to uh, every year improve on some of the public schools. Last year they did Lincoln Project. This year they're going to be doing Central. So with that, they have also looked at a section of neighborhoods in our city and decided to do a neighborhood impact project. So on Saturday, um, March 18th, we will be walking neighborhoods from East 6th Street to East 12th, from um, Holland to Wayne, to assess the needs in those areas. We will then um, take the greatest needs, a section of the greatest needs, and on the 22nd, we will implement neighborhood beautification projects with um, community members, leaders, and the residents of those neighborhoods as well. The youth are the ones that are going to be leading the charge on this, and they are inviting everybody to come out this Saturday to walk the properties to actually see the devastation that poverty and crime have taken on this area. This is an area that is one of our highest um, poverty-stricken and crime-stricken areas uh, from East 6th to East 12th, from uh, Holland to Wayne. A lot of our kids live in these areas, and they don't have the freedoms that a lot of other youth have. So they want to show the city that together that they can make a difference in improving these uh, neighborhoods to claim back ownership of them, to have people be accountable for their properties and keeping them clean, and just to restore pride back into the area that has seems to be has been lost. Um, so along with that letter that we have passed out is a flyer to remind you of our Global Youth Service Project um, that we're going to be doing. Um, and along with the Soldiers and Sailors and SafeNet, we have a lot of different projects happening. I'm going to turn um, over the mic to Sam Arup. He is our president-elect for next year. And he's going to be telling you about a different um, activity we're going to be doing along with Global Youth Service Day um, on Friday the 21st to kind of get it started. Sam? Hello. Um, on Friday the 21st, 
we're going to be having a kickoff event in the form of a kickball game in which we will kick out hunger. In which we will kick out hunger. Um, we will be requiring the competitors to donate a dollar and a non-perishable non perishable food item. Uh, and then we will then donate that to a uh, food bank. And hopefully it will be sunny and it will be at Ames uh, Field. And uh, and it, it's in addition to all the service uh, acts of service that we will be doing on uh, Global Youth Service Day. And I implore all of you who can uh, to join us on Global Youth Service Day or uh, this kickball event if you can. Thank you. Thank you. We are taking registration for the kickball tournament, by the way. So the teams will consist of 15 players, 10 youth, and 5 adults. So we're solicitating through our leaders and also um, our first responders, police, juvenile probation, fire, uh, and EMT, of course, city council, county council. We would like you all to form some people together and play with our youth in a tournament of kicking out hunger where we will bring awareness to the hunger and poverty situation in our town. And then the kids, like I said, will then again uh, donate. The money will be donated to Serve Erie's efforts at Central, so they're going to be giving it right back to the public schools. And then the food will be donated at local uh, smaller neighborhood food pantries. So that's what they've decided so far to do. And I'm the one that makes it all happen for them. So we implore you come on out and support us. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. President. Yes, sir. Mr. Uh, President. Just one statement. Uh, I can kick the ball, but can I get a designated runner? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Curse, and I'll fill in for you. A real runner. <laughs> <laughs> Any other sessions to be heard? Hearing none. Hearing none. <laughs> oh, I got you that time. <laughs> my name is MacDonald. My prop is 19th and Reed. You don't need to hear me. You just look and you'll see me. Uh, I have a little problem. You know, last week I was talking about that 35,000 that 30000 that uh, was given to the mayor. Now, I'm very respectful when I'm up here talking to y'all. And anybody else, I'm respectful. I respect people. I don't beat nobody down. But when you hear me, I'm telling you what's on my heart. And what I'm thinking, and uh, this is the way I feel about it. I can't help it how I feel. I don't think Mr. Shimmer going to make a good mayor. How you going? Look, he's the banker. He didn't retire. Mr. President, let me finish. Let, let me, me finish. let me explain something to you, please. We do not discuss any candidates running for office at the public meeting. Please keep it that way. Neither ourselves nor anybody else. I didn't say he was running. I said he just wouldn't make a good mayor. That's all. And I mean that. I tell him that to his face. <coughs> How can you quit a job and you're going to run for something? Mr. President. Yes, Mr. Jones. He's out of order, respectfully. Um, it's just a process, and so however you mask it, it's already been exposed, Mr. McDonald. Uh, so we have to change the topic respectfully. Don't I have a? Isn't there such thing as freedom of speech? There's yes, also reverence and rules in council chambers and in spaces, so you can't yell fire. That's not a fire in a theater. Just under the umbrella of public or, or freedom of speech. So the rules of council, respectfully, I know I'm not the president, but um, as a council member, I just want to remind you, respectfully, sir, that. Any campaign, interaction, or activity is inappropriate in these chambers, especially during the campaign year. As we discussed... Uh, I'm not with you on that. I'm, I'm just not with you on that. 
you're telling me what I can't do. And uh, I should be able to <coughs> voice my opinion. I'm not trying to uh, Mr. voice McDonald, somebody else's opinion. Uh, uh, Rose, hold the time one second. Mr. McDonald, we, you are free to address council on any issue that concerns the council don't or the city. Don't the council? We, we, we do not get involved in who's running for office or who is seeking office. That is not the purpose of this forum. It's for city business. So, and I've, as I said earlier, feel free to, uh, you know, if you don't like what we're doing, feel free to talk about that. But it's about the agenda well, I don't items. I like what you're doing now because you're, you're disturbing my uh, thinking pattern. I have something to say, and I figured that I should have to say it. And well, I don't know why, Mr. Jones, that you're so into... Uh, uh, before I, I'm going to start the clock, so you're, you're on your own time now. So. Okay, okay. So please keep it to agenda business or city business. I don't know why you're business. defending anybody. Uh, you know, you, you're spending more time in my time than I am. And every time I open my mouth, you, you're there to defend him. Is you this boy in the wood pile? First of all, uh, are Mr. you this boy in the wood pile? First of all, well, well, Mr. President, Mr. respectfully, uh, answer the question. I'm nobody's boy but my dad's. Well, you First of all, like his boy. second of all, Mr. President, please, if I may, okay, I, I will be very much respectful because I will always be that. I am not defending anyone. We as a council have a set of rules that we have to govern, that we are governed by, and we govern these meetings by. I, we're standing by upholding those rules. Just as if, <clears throat> whatever the rule might be, just because we may even disagree with the rule, but the rule is what it is. So I'm not defending a person. I'm standing in support of the rules that this body has put in place for how we operate and run these meetings. You can dislike that or like that. It's up to you. I know you don't like the fact that you only got five minutes twice a month. But there's, but there's nothing. But that's the rules. Respectfully. So we're done. So now you're wasting your time with me interacting with you. And so again, the issue that I'm standing on is not about an individual. It's about the rules of counsel. And that's how we operate and facilitate our meetings. And, and I will say this again as respectfully as I can. I do not appreciate the connotation or the attitude or the implication of what you said to me well, concerning said, anyone. Concerning anyone. Well, I said I said it and I don't take it back. Respectful. You're allowed to do that. Uh, but follow the rules of counsel today and every day. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you, Mr. President, um, for the Mr. liberty. McDonald, and please, to everybody out there, this is a public forum. This is not somebody's opportunity to take shots at anybody. I'm if you don't like, shot let me, me explain Let me explain something to you. I'm going to say this one time, and the next time, somebody's going to leave this building again. This is about city business. This is about business that concerns the agenda. This is any item, but if you want to talk about politics, go out in the lobby. You're free to do that. We do, I do not want to hear any talk about whose boy we are or who thinks we're under the mayor's uh, purvey or something like that, because I am an independent as well as all my members of council. Please honor that. We honor your opinion. So I'm not going to put up with any more of this thing about, you know, we're under, you know, we, we do what the mayor says. I voted against the mayor many times, and so has many of these members here. We're not getting involved in that. So if you're not going to keep on task, I'm going to tell you your five minutes is up. If you have something to discuss with council, feel free to talk. But there'll be no more personal attacks at this council this again. This is not a personal attack. No more. Nobody. That's it. That's the end of the personal attack. <clears throat> do you have anything to offer? I wish y'all would do your job. That, that's what I have to offer. All I ask you is do your job, and you're not very good at it. And what I said still goes. I don't back up off the no Are there any other citizens to be heard? Are there any other citizens to be heard? Are there any other citizens to be heard? Hearing none, Rose, let's move on with the agenda. Ordinances for final passage. Oh, yes, that was. Council file number 15982, official ordinance number 7 2017. An ordinance appropriating the sum of $28,000 from unappropriated and anticipated revenue and providing for the expenditure thereof 
Police Drug and Vice Program. By Mr. Winarski, second by Mr. Witherspoon, the Council File Ordinance Bill Number 5982, and now known as Official File Ordinance Number 72017, be finally passed by the City Council. Mrs. Arrington, Mr. Brennan, Mr. Jones, Mr. Mursky, Mr. Winarski, Mr. Witherspoon, Mr. Kotowski. City Council passed Official File Ordinance Number 72017, finally by A7, A0. Ordinances for first reading, Council File Number 15983, an ordinance amending official ordinance number 80-2005 known as the Zoning Ordinance of the City of Erie by changing the classification of the property located between East 18th and East 19th Streets Wing Street to Buffalo Road from M1 Light Manufacturing and R2 Medium Density Residential to M2 Heavy Manufacturing per request of Poles Real Estate and Pro Waste Services, Inc. By Mrs. Arrington, second by Mr. Witherspoon, the Council File Ordinance Number 5983, having been read, is hereby adopted on first reading by the City Council. Mrs. Arrington, Mr. Brennan, Mr. Jones, Mr. Mursky, Mr. Winarski, Mr. Witherspoon, Mr. Kotowski. City Council read and adopt Council File Ordinance Number 15983 by Yay 7 Nay 0 on first reading. Mr. President. Yes, sir, Mr. Mursky. I'd like to make a motion to move the balance of the agenda. Second. We have a second. Are there any separations? I'd like to separate number one under new business, please. Number one under new business? Yes, sir. Thank you. Are there any other separations? Any other separations? Hearing none, Rose. All right, moving the balance of the agenda. Mrs. Arrington, Mr. Brennan, Mr. Jones, Mr. Mursky, Mr. Winarski, Mr. Witherspoon, Mr. Kotowski. Resolution uh, by Mr. Jones that Harry Ewell, Jr. of 1541 Fairmont Parkway, Erie, PA, is appointed to the Erie Sewer, Wa Erie Sewer Authority for a five-year term expiring December 31st, 2021. Mr. Ewell is replacing board member Mr. John Vincent, who has resigned. Discussion? Okay, Mr. Yeah. Um, Mr. President, I, I regrettably, um, <clears throat> I was I teach a class on Wednesday evenings, and um, <laughs> I couldn't find the key to lock the building up today, so I couldn't get here earlier than right before the meeting to let staff know I received a call from Mr. Yule, and regrettably, he's going to have to um, turn down this opportunity to serve in this capacity, uh, and so I want to um, actually pull this from the agenda uh, for that reason, and okay. I will um, hopefully by the end of the week um, have someone to replace for our next agenda. <laughs> You're good. <laughs> okay, that'll take us to committee reports, Mr. President. Okay. Uh, start with uh, Mr. Jones this time. I think I've said enough. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I. Um, no report, Mr. President. Okay. Uh, Mr. Brennan. Took you up a little bit, huh? Yeah. I have a couple things to report here. Um, we had a, um, a discussion with the Erie Downtown Partnership before the meeting today. Uh, and the reason was to um, talk about an early renewal for the Erie Downtown Improvement District. Um, the current charter ends in 2019, and they want to extend to 2029. So, um, we, uh, we're going to be uh, voting on a resolution at the next meeting. Um, but there's two reasons for doing the uh, early renewal. One is for um, do the Erie Downtown Master Plan. You know, we, we need a long-term commitment from them to carry out the plan. Um, and having a longer uh, charter not ending in 2019 uh, is a good idea. And also their member agreements are 10-year agreements, so it just makes sense to, uh, uh, to try to have early renewal for their, for their charter. Um, also, I had a, attended the Erie Parking Authority meeting uh, yesterday. Um, they're hopefully going to be finalizing it soon, but they're working on proposals for the parking meter upgrades in the kiosks. Uh, I think a lot of people heard about it already to try to pay for credit with credit cards, and uh, you can also pay with um, 
you know, still your quarters if you, if you want to. Um, and also they're working on the uh, amendment changes for some parking uh, regulation changes to uh, some different fine amounts. So that's going to be um, being discussed soon and we'll, we'll be uh, bringing to, uh, to council. Um, and also, I, I believe I mentioned this at the last meeting also, but the authority is meeting with uh, developers and also several organizations in the downtown area and the waterfront for um, some p parking studies to determine if any uh, possible parking ramps or anything is needed uh, then on the bayfront or else in the area of the hospital. So um, we'll be hearing about that uh, at some time in the future to see if it's a, a need or um, see how the parking studies go. So thank you. Uh, Councilwoman Eric. Uh, I'm shaking you up, huh? <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. First off, I would like to say this past weekend, um, MAPV had its fifth annual community call for peace, and it was an amazing turnout from the, from, from the community of Erie. And I would just like to thank everybody, thank all the musicians who, who dedicated their time to come out and play. It was a fantastic day, and, and um, it was really overwhelming. So I would like to thank the Erie community. And a couple more things. Next Saturday, March 25th, 12 noon, at the Booker T. Washington Center, I will be doing my fourth annual youth job fair. And the ages is from 15 to 25, so it's actually youth and young adults. So I would like all parents to bring their children out, you know, dress to impress, because a lot of my vendors may be hiring on the spot. You know, I've been saying this from day one. If we keep them busy, we'll keep them out of trouble. That's why I continue to do this job fair. And over the last four years, all together, probably 100-plus kids got hired on the spot. So I encourage parents to bring your, your youth out, even up to the age of 15. We got some vendors there that hire at the age of 15 to give our kids something to do. And, and to me, too, it also helped the household. You know, we have a high rate of poverty, but when these kids can go out and get a job, bring money home, they can buy their own school clothes to lift some of that burden off of their parents. So please bring your kids out, and hopefully they'll get a job. But make sure they dress to impress. But the job fair starts at noon, but we're going to have orientation at 11 o'clock for the kids. We, we want to talk to them and, and show them how to go out there and do an interview. You know, so, and that's going to be from 11 to noon. We got um, people from Erie Insurance, um, National Few from Human Resources is coming out and talking to our kids and encouraging them and telling them what they need to do in order to, to get a job. So please bring your youth out. And one more thing, the following Saturday, April 1st at 12 noon, from 12 to 2, I will be having my second annual Teen Summit. This is a platform for our youth to talk about some of the issues that's going on in our community. The issues that we will be addressing would be bullying, peer pressure, violence, and drugs. And this is only for the youth to talk. I, I encourage the parents to come out. All we're going to do, even me, the only thing I'm going to do is just welcome everybody and I'm going to sit down and I'm going to take a seat. It's all driven by the youth because in order for us to help the kids in our community, we need to let them tell us what we need to do. So um, I'm going to be sending out flyers. It's going to be in the newspaper. I'm even thinking about doing an interview on the TV because I want to get as many kids out here as I can on April, uh, April 1st so we can hear what they have to say and so we can try to help them with some of the issues that we have going on in our community. Thank you. Mr. Mursky. Thank you, Mr. President. Just a few things to report. As liaison to the Neighborhood Watch, I attended the uh, Mercyhurst Neighborhood Watch meeting, and um, the report up there is that everything, I think the weather is keeping everything quiet, and so um, that's a good thing. Now, we do know that St. Patrick's Day is coming up, so ne next uh, month's report might be a little different, but um, we do have uh, extra police out that Mercyhurst have hired, and, um, and our own guys and girls um, from our police force that will be out um, enforcing the law. So that, that should help out with that. I want to thank Mrs. Arrington for her um, Mothers Against Teen Violence Community Call for Peace. I attended that as well. And um, one of the musicians that was there was this rapper, Young Scala, and he was fantastic. Uh, he wrote a, a rap about uh, the violence in Erie and turning things around, and it was really 
very impressive. We have a lot of young talent in Erie, and I want to thank Mrs. Arrington for showcasing that. I also attended the Polish Falcons Nest 123 St. Casmer's Day celebration, and I congratulate all of the winners um, of the Polish Falcons Awards um, from the 19th Street Falcons. Uh, I also wanted to recognize in a special way the Catholic Sisters. Last week was Catholic Sisters Week. Um, in Erie, we're very fortunate to have the Benedictine Sisters of Erie, the Sisters of Mercy, and um, the Sisters of St. Joseph. Um, many of us were, were taught by them, and they continue to this day to uh, enhance our city. Um, the Benedictines have the Art House, the Sisters of St. Joseph Neighborhood Network, Sisters of Mercy have the House of Mercy and Mercy Center for Women. Uh, they're contributing in many ways to our community to make it a better place, and so uh, we, we recognize them and, and thank them for their service. And finally, um, I was given an update on the Erie Innovation District by Dr. David Dowsey of Mercyhurst, and um, it's still in the formation stages, but they are really making progress towards that innovation district. And um, the, the concept is very similar to that of um, what they've done at Carnegie Mellon and, and creating jobs that spin off of the academics and, and with a focus here on cybersecurity. We have a, a good opportunity to bring high-paying jobs to Erie. So I'm very excited about that. And it's in collaboration with UPMC Hammett, Erie Insurance, and um, Monsalve and Associates. So we're, we're very um, fortunate to have that innovation going on. That's all I have to report, Mr. President. Mr. Wernerski. Thank you, Mr. President. Good evening, everyone. Just two items. Uh, no committee reports, but uh, speaking with Mr. Tan, Executive Director of the MTA, he's going to come before Council at our next meeting in caucus. Just give us a uh, State of the Union slash EMTA update on uh, Naturally, phase two of their uh, $60 million expansion and uh, just more of the State of the Union of the EMTA and how things are going and uh, what to look forward to in the future. Um, one other thing I did, uh, I did go to the groundbreaking this past week at Erie Insurance Exchange. Uh, once again, what a partner we have and very fortunate to have a partner like that in the city of Erie. But. Uh, $135 million development, which is going to create at least, what they're saying, 600 new jobs in the city of Erie. So I is just one of those things that uh, can't be ignored. Uh, it's uh, nice to have a partner like Erie Insurance, one that is uh, investing in our city and, uh, and is on the tax rolls also. So thank you. Mr. Witherspoon. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I want to thank Mrs. Arrington for all the work she does. Uh, she's coming off probably a two and a half, three week illness, and she never stopped. I know I talked to her once on the phone and could barely hear her, and she never stopped. And uh, I commend you for that, but at the same time, if you get sick and you're down, then the program's going to slow down as well. So you take care of yourself. Um, also, the uh, I'm glad to see that the City of Erie and the Recreation Department uh, is going to refurbish and put new baskets down on the Bayfront, uh, down on Second Street. Uh, it's long overdue, and I appreciate that very much. And working with them, we're going to bring an extension of our league down to the west side. And I'll be needing additional volunteers. I will be going door to door. It's very important that when you go to a new area and you still have that east side, west side mentality, you have to get those who live in the area to volunteer and take ownership of the league. So we're going to go over there. Uh, we're going to start out with the young ones, 9 to 10, 11 to 12. We're going to stop right there for the first year. And if it's successful, we plan to go to 13, 14. And if that's successful for two years, then we'll go 15, 16, similar to what we're doing now on 19th Street. And if you're not sure what 19th Street is, 
Witherspoon Lane. Ain't that what it is? Okay. It's on the map. It's on the map. Uh, <laughs> no, they don't plow it. I don't know why. <laughs> I got stuck there the other day. Um, but I want to thank uh, uh, the City of Erie for uh, doing that. Uh, our registration will begin April 1st. Uh, this year, we're concentrating on the females. Uh, there was little or no females last year signed up, but Darlene Feeney uh, will be coordinating that. Uh, she's been in the school system. She knows the young ladies. She knows the coaches. And uh, we're looking for a big turnout uh, this year. Our goal, all total, is 350 unduplicated youth in both areas. And I'll keep you updated on that. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Uh, I, too, had the pleasure of attending the neighborhood watch with uh, Councilman Mursky. And uh, we, too, pray for a good outcome on many of the holidays. Snow. Pray for snow. But uh, we also attended a fire pension meeting along with the controller, and things are progressing very well with that fund. And they had a very good month. We're hoping for many new ones. And on a personal note, I'd like to thank uh, Joe. I'd like you to thank the Streets Department. Uh, on my recent trip to the far east of the Commonwealth, the, the paranoia which set in with the coming storm was such that, uh, you know, caused them to salt their streets two days early. But, you know, it was a pleasure to come home in the midst of the storm and know that I could get up my street, that it was plowed the last 24 hours pretty good. Uh, it's a testament to our hard work of our streets department. I think we take them for granted sometimes. Um, and, that, you know, that goes out to all the people through the whole Commonwealth who kept all the highways clean this past storm. And I'd like to thank Mel for his league and his uh, commitment to expanding it. Mel, I'd like to volunteer a little bit if I have some time this summer. Sure. My jump shot's not as good as it used to be, but my hook shot is still devastating. But I'll be glad to help out. And, Sonia, you do a lot of great work, and I want to thank you for your commitment to the community. Which brings me to my last comment, which I wish I didn't have to say time and time again. Uh, I get very sad when I have to sit up here and rule people out of order. It's not my pleasure to do that, but I'm going to explain it once more for everybody. I spent some time in Philadelphia this week at the birthplace of this country. No one honors the Constitution more than I do. But this is a public meeting, and it's for city business. We have many issues that are of really great importance to the city. We don't need to be debating personal attacks or who's, who feels we're under whose supervision or who feels like they don't like who's running for public office. That's a whole different issue. This is a democracy. Anybody can feel free to run for any office they want, but we're not going to discuss that here. This is about city business. Nobody is abrogating the First Amendment, but this is a public meeting. It's going to be held with some decorum, and I hope this is the last time that I have to rule anybody out of order or have any one of my council people have to tell me to ask them to be quiet. So please respect the sanctity of what this is intended. That we conduct important business here, and we're not going to put up with any more personal attacks or vendettas or, you know, who wants to get their personal agenda across. This is about city business, city problems, and the city agenda. And with that, uh, that we'll uh, look for an adjournment. Yep. Oh, I forgot our controller. Sorry about that. <laughs> After all those years? With all that yelling, I forgot that. <coughs> But I apologize. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, our office is finishing up the required reports for the state uh, regarding the pension plans, and they will be submitted before the April 1st deadline. And I'll have documentation uh, to counsel, as usual, for the exact dates and the completion of the reports for the filing. It's just that the next council meeting is after the filing date, so I just wanted you to be aware they're going to be in, and then I'll give you that letter that will inform you that they've formally been filed and the date. So. Thank you for your hard work, and I know it's a big process. Thank you. Uh, Joe? 
Just very quickly, I wanted to say I also had the honor of attending the, brown, the groundbreaking for Erie Insurance last Friday. Um, wonderful event, and of, of course, Erie Insurance always puts on a, a first rate anything that they do. So I'm looking forward to, to seeing this um, building come up in the next um, couple of months and, and see the, the progress that's happening here in our downtown. I also had the privilege of attending um, an announcement with the Bayhawks on Monday evening. They announced their affiliation with the Atlanta Hawks. Um, so we do have um, D League basketball that will be um, that, that will keep going in the city of Erie for the next couple of years. So um, hopefully something that develops into something further. Um, but for now, at least we know we have a couple more years with the, with the Bayhawks. So we are certainly fortunate for that. Thank you. Anything for you, Mr. Carley? <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Nothing. We so have a motion to adjourn. No, no report. <laughs> motion to adjourn? Motion. So Second. Move. Second. <laughs> Meeting City adjourned. Council adjourns at 821. Had your chance. Had your chance. Mr. Kwiatkowski, Ms. Searton, Mr. Brennan, Mr. Jones, Mr. Mercer, Mr. 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 M